Hello and welcome everyone. Today our topic of discussion is sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is a multi-system granulomatous disease with non-specific clinical manifestations that commonly affects pulmonary systems and other organs including eyes, skin, liver, spleen and lymph node. However, it most often starts in lungs and lymph node. Let's see its causes, symptoms, diagnosis, treatment and management. The exact cause of sarcoidosis is unknown but it is believed to involve an abnormal immune response. The immune system which normally helps protect the body from harmful substances begin to overreact and form non-caseating granulomas and immune reactions. Various factors including infection, genetic predisposition and environmental factors are involved in pathology of sarcoidosis. Genetic factors 11 sarcoidosis risk loci are identified and they are BTNL2, HLA-B, HLA-DPB1, ANXA11, IL23R, SH2B3 slash ATXN2, IL12B, NFKB1 slash MNBA, FAM177B, chromosome 11Q13.1 and RAB23. Environmental factors include exposure to wood stoves, soil, tree pollen, inorganic particulates, insecticides, herbicides, bioaerosols and nanoparticles. The persons involved in hardware, gardening material, silica industry, building supplies, metal workers as well as ship servicemen in navy, fire workers, all are at a higher risk of developing sarcoidosis. Infection Infectious agents such as mycobacteria, leptospira, mycoplasma, herpes, retro, chlamydia, borrelia, pneumocystis, these all are associated with sarcoidosis. Isolation of MTB DNA from tissue specimen collected from the sarcoidosis patients illustrate that mycobacterium is a strongest candidate for infection mediated sarcoidosis. It has been reported that a patient treated with interferon alpha therapy for hepatitis C infection may also develop sarcoidosis. Autoimmunity Although no disease specific autoantibodies have been observed, it has been shown that major histocompatibility complex class 2 molecules on antigen presenting cells possess an autoantigen that is recognized by T cell receptor of responding T cells in sarcoidosis patient. Another important aspect of autoimmunity is imbalanced gut microbiome. Sarcoidosis overlaps with other autoimmune diseases including rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune thyroid disease, Jogren syndrome and ankylosing spondylitis. Now let's see the symptoms. Symptoms of sarcoidosis can vary greatly depending on which organs are affected. Most common symptoms include persistent dry cough, shortness of breath, chest pain, fatigue, fever, swollen lymph nodes, skin rashes, eye irritation or vision problems, weight loss, night sweat, erythema nodosum. Sarcoidosis may be acute, subacute or chronic. However, in majority of cases it is entirely asymptomatic. It is associated with Lofgren syndrome where erythema nodosum and bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy are present which is one of the classic and acute presentation of sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is often diagnosed when aberrations are identified on the chest x-ray during routine examination based on the presence of lung infiltration and lymphadenopathies on x-ray. Different stages of sarcoidosis have been described. Radiographic type 0 shows no visible findings. Type 1 has a bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. Type 2 includes bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy plus parenchymal infiltration. Type 3 includes 
parenchymal infiltration without adenopathy in regular x-ray type 4 advanced fibrosis with severe distortion of normal lung architecture predominantly in the middle and the upper lobe with evidence of bronchiectasis hyalur retraction bulla cyst and more rarely honeycombing pattern now let's see the system wise symptoms first is lung involvement the symptoms are dry cough wheezing dyspnea fatigue in acute condition it may show pleural effusion pericardial effusion pneumothorax in chronic condition it it can show lung fibrosis respiratory failure when lymph nodes are involved then the symptoms are peripheral lymphadenopathy affected lymph nodes are moderately swollen and are usually not painful endocrine and exocrine involvement Symptoms are thyroid dysfunction, parotid enlargement, hypothalamic pituitary effects such as diabetes insipidus. Skin involvement symptoms are erythema nodosum, profuse sweating, nodules, papules and plaques. Eye involvement, pain, photophobia, hyperemia and sometimes associated with Lofgren syndrome. Bone involvement, osteoporosis and osteopenia are common. Nodular lesions, cystic lesions involving joints, arthritis and arthralgia. Upper respiratory tract, larynx, nasopharynx and nose are affected. Renal involvement, renal calculi, nephrocalcinosis, interstitial nephritis and kidney failure. Cardiac involvement, symptoms are heart failure, syncope. Neurological involvement or neurosarcoidosis shows facial palsy, meningeal inflammation, encephalopathy, vasculopathy, seizures, hydrocephalus and mass lesions. Liver and spleen involvement shows hepatosplenomegaly, intrahepatic cholestasis and portal hypertension and altered liver function. Now let's learn about the diagnosis of sarcoidosis. Diagnosing sarcoidosis can be challenging because its symptoms mimic those of other diseases. Due to its unknown etiology, early diagnosis and detection are difficult. However, advent of advanced technologies such as endobronchial ultrasound guided biopsy, high resolution CT scan, for lung abnormality and enlarged lymph nodes, MRI and 18F fluoro deoxyglucose positron emission tomography has improved our ability to reliably diagnose this condition and accurately forecast its prognosis. Let's learn diagnosis in detail. On physical examination, one can find fever, fatigue, malaise, weight loss, erythema nodosum. On routine ophthalmologic examination, it is orbital and eyelid granulomas present. On peripheral blood count, lymphopenia can be observed. In the renal function test, there are high level of calcium, urea and creatinine. Urine analysis shows hypercalciuria. Pulmonary function test can be used to assess pulmonary involvement and disease severity. Tissue biopsy is used for presence of granuloma, which can be found in lung, lymph node, skin, salivary gland, conjunctiva. Bronchial biopsy used to detect pulmonary involvement. It can be endobronchial ultrasound guided transbronchial needle aspirate or trans and endobronchial biopsy. Chest x-ray used for bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy and disseminated nodules in lung. On HRCT we can find differentiation of sarcoidosis from other pulmonary condition. FTG PET is useful because it is highly sensitive to detect cardiac and pulmonary involvement. ECG shows repolarization disturbances, ectopic beats and rhythm abnormality. MRI is useful for detect neurological involvement, spinal cord, meninges, skull, vault and pituitary lesions. Biological marker or biomarker refers to a broad subcategory of medical science that can be accurately, objectively and reproducibly measured. Several biomarkers have been proposed for diagnosis of sarcoidosis and the monitoring of its progression but 
none has been accepted wholly in the practice i am mentioning some biomarker name here but the detailed discussion about it is out of the scope of this video serum biomarkers are serum angiotensin converting enzyme cetotriosidase lysozyme nepopterin hypercalcemia soluble il2 receptor saa chemokines kl6 interferon gamma tgf beta tnf alpha in bal the markers are cd4 cd8 ratio percentage of wbc in bal in excelled breath biomarkers they are 8 isoprostein carbon monoxide and nitric oxide now let's learn about the histopathology of sarcoidosis this disease is characterized by presence of all the several affected organ and tissues of multiple well form non caseating epithelioid cell granulomas which are complex clusters of epithelioid cells and multinucleated giant cells with minimal to no central necrosis these granulomas proceed either to resolution or to conversion into hyaline connective tissue several types of inclusion may be seen in granulomas such as schumann bodies asteroid bodies hamazaki weizenberg bodies and calcium oxalate crystals because sarcoidosis is a diagnosis of exclusion the careful examination of biopsy specimen to exclude other causes of granulomatous inflammation especially fungal and mycobacterial infection as well as foreign body reaction must be performed now let's learn about the differential diagnosis of sarcoidosis it can be tuberculosis cat scratch disease lung cancer lymphoma occupational lung disease fungal infection now let's learn about the treatment while there is a no cure for sarcoidosis the treatment aims to relieve symptoms and prevent organ damage not every patient needs to be treated patient can be followed up over long periods because spontaneous resolution may occur development of dangerous clinical conditions and a significant impairment in the quality of life are two major indications for clinician to start interventional treatment therapeutic strategies include mental and emotional well being in addition to physical well being oral corticosteroids are the first line of treatment such as prednisolone to reduce inflammation and suppress immune system other modalities are immunosuppressive drugs for those who do not respond to corticosteroids third is anti inflammatory medications to manage symptoms like joint pain and skin rashes medication to treat specific organ involvement such as eye drops for uveitis now let's learn about the management strategies in addition to medical management lifestyle changes can help manage sarcoidosis and improve quality of life here are some tips quit smoking as smoking can worsen the lung symptoms avoid exposure to environmental factors such as dust chemicals and certain types of mold get regular exercise to improve lung function and overall health eat a balanced diet rich in fruits vegetables and whole grains to support your immune system stay hydrated to keep mucus thin and make it easier to clear your airways So this is in short about sarcoidosis hope you like it and these are the references for this video thank you see you in the next video bye